Okay, hello. Here I am pretending to be at the beach. That's something that Microsoft Teams allows me to do. I don't really feel the sun. Ooh, look at that. I don't really feel the sun, but hey, I'm having a good time in the glow of mathematics. Enough of that. We're going to do the last part of your homework for linear functions. We're going to be talking about, well, we're going to do one application, and then we're going to talk about inequalities. Okay, here we go. Now, what I want to see is this. Is there any chance, any chance at all, that I can show the transcript? And there isn't really. I wonder. Now you see, I'm trying to do this because I think it would help you to be able to see the transcript And here and here, where, he, where we have the transcript over here, which is kind of bleeding into the earlier one. And let me call up the calculator in case I need it. No, I always do that. And so there we go. All right. I don't think we're going to need it, but you just never know. Always be prepared, I say. Now here we have a fax corporation. They make faxes. And they bought a fax machine for $700. The fax machine depreciates. It depreciates. At a rate of $25 a month. Rate means slope. Depreciates means negative slope. Okay. Now, in the beginning, the very, very beginning, the value of the fax machine was $700. But this says that the fax machine depreciates at a rate of $25 per month. So after one month, um, the fax machine will be worth $675 and so on. So when we're asked to find a function f, that can be used to determine the value of the fax machine T months after purchase. We have this. We start out at $700 when T is zero, that is at the very beginning. T is the number of months. And then every month, this value right here is going to go down by $25 a month. So this is a very good function. 
Now we're being asked to choose the graph that would show this negative 25t plus 700. Notice that all four of the graphs go up, well, on the vertical axis, they go from zero to 800, and on the time axis, t, which is acting like x, the time goes from zero to 40 months. One month, two months, three months, four months. No, that's not right, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, each one of these is four months, eight months, 12 months, 16 months, and so on. So just looking at this, I know that my slope is negative 25. The slope of this horizontal line is zero. So that cannot be the right answer. This slope rising from left to right is positive. M is positive. M is positive, so it can't be negative. And look at what our slope is, it's negative because the value is depreciating going down, not rising up as time goes by. Both of these graphs, you can see what the answer is, but if you couldn't see that answer, you wouldn't be able to tell right away which of these graphs is the right one. You'd have to look at them. But both of these graphs depict a negative slope. Negative slope. Negative slope. So how are we going to know? How are we going to know which one is the correct one since they both start at $700? The easiest way, the quickest way, is to find the x-intercept. Let's do that because here is the x-intercept. So to find the x-intercept, I need f – no, I don't. I need zero. This needs to be zero because down here on the t-axis, which is also the x-axis if we were using an x, the y value, f of t, is zero down here. Right there. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Right there. Right there. See, it says zero. Okay, so we're going to let f of t equal zero. 0 equals negative 25t plus 700. I'm going to isolate the t term, which means I'm going to subtract 700 from both sides of this equation. That will give me negative 700 on the left and negative 25t on the right. So I'll divide by negative 25 
and divide by negative 25. Over here on the right, right here, the positives cancel, the 25s cancel, and I'm left with T. Over here, 700 divided by 25. Well, doggone, we do need the calculator. 700 divided by 25. It's 28. So the time in months is 28. Until what? Until the value of the fax machine is zero. So let's take a look. Why is this one correct and this one not? 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. All right. I mean, it doesn't even get to 20. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 22, 24. Uh, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28, right there. In 28 months, the Y value, which is the money value, will be zero. So that's how you can tell that this is the correct graph. Okay. The cost starts out at $700 drops by $25 every month, which is the correct graph. So much depends on the slope, just to visually be able to know what's correct. Then it's just a choice between these two, which we carry out by finding the x-intercept. Okay, now we're going to solve a linear inequality. It's going to be necessary to solve this on your paper before you put the answer onto my math lab. So here we go. Graph the system of inequalities, then find the coordinates of the vertex. We're going to do that. There are steps to follow. And here they are. I like to choose different colors. Temporarily. Temporary. Or temporarily. I rewrite these inequalities, y is less than or equal to x, y is greater than or equal to 6 minus x. I write these uh, without marking them up, hopefully. I, I write these with an equal sign instead of an inequality sign. That's so I can find just the line that describes this. Later, we'll solve the inequality. First, we need the line. Y equals X. And over here, Y equals 6 minus X. Now I need to find two points so that I can graph each line. 
I do it like this. Y equals X. I make it X in a Y chart. All right, um, if X is zero, then Y is zero. If I'm just picking these numbers out of the air, if X is three, Y is three. This is the identity function. X and Y are always equal. So I come down here, zero, zero, and three, three are my points. For the blue line, zero, zero, and one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, I graph the line. Or attempt to graph the line. It's not exact, but it's okay. All right, now there is another step. And that is, I go back to y is less than or equal to x. And I choose a test point. A test point is any point not on the line. So that leaves me lots of, lo of points I could choose from. Which one to choose? Doesn't matter. How about four zero? Four zero is going to be my test point. Four comma zero. Where X is four and Y is zero. It could have been any other point not on the line. Now I'm going to test the test point. Zero, see, for y is less than or equal to x. Here's y, here's x. Zero is less than or equal to x. Is that true? Of course it's true. True. Wow, x. What happened to my eraser? Unfair. Luckily, I can go here. There. Less than or equal to four. That's what X is. Is that true? Yes. I come back to the graph and I write a little bitty true right next to the point. Why do I do that? Because I'm going to make arrows starting on the blue line that go toward, point toward the true side. All right, that'll do. We're now done with y is less than or equal to x. 
I temporarily changed y is less than or equal to x to y equals x. And then I made a sign chart, not a sign chart, but a point chart, an xy chart, so that I could come up with some points that are on this line in order to graph the line. There they are. There are the two points, 0, 0, and 3, 3. Then I connected up the points. This is how you'll graph on my math lab. You have to find two points first. Then, on paper, I go back to y is less than or equal to x. I choose a test point not on the line. And then I test it. I take the y coordinate and put it in for y and the x coordinate and put it in for x. And I ask myself, is that true? And here it was true. My arrows will <clears throat> always point toward the true side. There. Now we're going to do the same steps with y is greater than or equal to 6 minus x, which I've already temporarily written as y equals 6 minus x. I'm going to come down here. y equals 6 minus x. I'll make an XY chart. All I need is two points. Now, it would be really easy to say X is zero. Why not? If X is zero, then Y is going to be six minus zero, which is six. So I put a six right here. Now, it's easier just to stick with X. I don't have to choose intercepts. This one is an intercept, I'll admit, but it was just so easy to put a zero in for X. Now, what if I, oh, why don't I go with three again? If X is three, then Y will equal six minus three, which is three. Oh my goodness. 3, 3. Well, that's going to be our point of intersection of these two lines. But right now, let's not worry about it. I outsmarted myself. Most of the time, that's not going to happen. So I'm debating. I think I better change my numbers and pretend I don't know now what the point of intersection will be. The vertex is the point of intersection. It's also the change in direction. We'll talk about that. Why don't I let X equal four? I'm gonna do that. We'll let X equal four. Then Y is going to equal six minus four which is two. So four, two is my second point. We need to go through the process of finding the vertex. If we already know the vertex, then there won't be any need, but you need to know. You do already know, you have already done this back in beginning algebra, but you might be a little rusty, so we have to do it again. So anyway, right now I am going to graph two points, plot two points. Zero six is right here. And four, two. One, two, three, four, one, two, right here. And then I connect up the points. Oh, 
oh dear, look what I did. I'm going to have a squiggly line, but it's not too squiggly. Okay, now there's my line. Now I go back to Y is greater than or equal to 6 minus X. And I choose a test point, which is any point not on the red line. How about this point? What is that point? I don't know. Negative one, negative two, negative three, one, two, three. Okay, this test point is negative three, three. So, My test point is negative 3, 3. This is the X coordinate. This is the Y coordinate. So I am saying Y is greater than or equal to 6 minus negative 3, which is 6 plus three, which is nine. So I have three is greater than or equal to nine. Oh dear, that's false. Okay. Well, this little guy gave me a false. What that means is that every point over here will give me a true answer for the red line. So I am going to draw my arrows going in the opposite direction from the false answer. Now then, we're done with the graphic. We have two points and we can see which slice of the pie the two colors overlap in. Blue is pointing this way There, 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 and it's not really red. It's actually dark violet. I looked it up. This is where the two colors or the two sets of shadings overlap. I have all the information I need now to graph the lines in my math lab. I have two points for the blue line, so I can easily graph the blue line. I have two points for the violet line, so I can easily graph the violet line. And then there's a little paint bucket icon Looks more like a bird, but it's supposed to be a paint bucket. You're going to drag this to this quadrant, this slice of pie, and then click with your mouse. And what will happen will be <sighs> what will happen will be there. Okay, I'm going to choose green. However, 
you're going to get yellow in my math lab. This is the solution to your linear inequality, really called a linear inequality in two variables, X and Y. We're done with the graphing until, I mean, and then you put it into my math lab and you check your answer. Now we have one more part to do. Where the lines cross is called the vertex. It's a little more complicated than that, but you need more lines and you need more shadings to know exactly what the vertex is. And in that case, there would be more than one. Yes, we're doing the simplest case today. Now, if you remember from beginning algebra or algebra one, what you do is you take the equations for the lines and you write them like this, y equals x and y equals six minus x. And then there are two methods for solving this system of equations, which is what you have to do to find the point of intersection which is what our vertex is. Substitution would be perfect because y equals x and x equals y. This is line one. This is line two. And so if x equals y, I can put a y over here y equals 6 minus y. Because x equals y, I can do that. Now I'm going to get my y terms together by adding y to both sides of the equation. Plus y and plus y. <coughs> That will give me, well, actually, I don't need those lines, do I? That will give me 2y on the left and 6 minus y plus y minus y plus y zeroes out. So I'll have 2y equals 6. And then to solve for y, I'll divide by 2 and divide by 2. So y equals 3, because 6 divided by 2 is 3. Now, I can go back to this equation and say, OK, y is 3. If y equals x, then 3 will equal 3. So y is 3 and x is 3, so x is three. So the point three, three is our point of intersection, which when we're working with inequalities and shading is also called the vertex. V E R T E X is three, three. You enter this with the parentheses, because it's a point, you enter that point into my math lab. And I'm sure it'll tell you, good answer. Let's do one more. Graph the system of inequalities, then find the coordinates of the vertices. We're going to use exactly the same steps. I will let x plus 
y equals one, be there for y, and x minus y equals five, be there for line two. We can call them that also. And it's better to do it that way, line one and line two. All right, so I usually start with line one first. It's as good as any. I'll start up here. X plus Y equals one. I need two points. I make an X and a Y chart. With an equation like that, it is going to be easiest to find the intercepts. This is the kind of chart you draw when you're looking for the y-intercept and the x-intercept. If x is zero, then you can just look at this and see y will be one. If y is zero, then x will be one. So I will go graph these points. 0, 1, and 1, 0. 0, 1, and 1, 0. And then draw a line. And then again, This is much, much easier on my math lab. All you have to do is click on the two points and boom, you've got a line. Now I've drawn my line. I go back to the inequality. Okay, X plus Y is less than or equal to one. I need to find a test point. The easiest test point when your line does not go through it is zero, zero. Right there, zero, zero. That'll be my test point. So my test point, might as well put it here, test point is zero comma zero. Now, what does that mean? Well, if X is zero and Y is zero, I'll have zero plus zero is less than or equal to one. So zero is less than or equal to one. And that is definitely true. So my zero, zero point here gives me a true. And I will draw arrows in the direction of the true, the true direction. I certainly don't want false. We're done with the blue line. Now we change to the red line. I lived in Boston for a while, a very short while, about six months, nine months, and uh, they have a train line, a subway called, the, uh, well, they have the green line and I think they have the blue line and I think they have the red line. I don't know if they still do, but 
it was quite a time living there. It was pretty interesting. Okay, now, here we go. Let me come over here, draw a line, and start here with x minus y equals 5. I'll make an x and a y chart. Now, if x is 0, then we'll have 0 minus y equals 5. Now, there's an invisible 1 here. So 0 minus negative 1y is negative 1y equals 5. So I divide both sides by negative 1, and I get y equals 1. Uh-uh, negative. I divide it by negative 1. So 5 divided by negative 1 is negative 5. getting late in the day. The later it is, the more likely I am to make little arithmetic mistakes. You are that way too. So always be aware that that could happen to you. Now, if y is zero, that's going to be pretty easy. We'll have x minus zero equals five. So x equals five. We now have two points um, to graph the violet or red line. Zero, negative five or five, zero, and five, zero. So zero, negative five, negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four, negative five. That's the, excuse me, that's the y-intercept. And five, zero. With these two lines, it was just very, very easy to find the intercepts. Sometimes it's easy, sometimes it's not. So I draw a line to connect the points. And this is not perfect. But oh well. OK. I've drawn the line. Now I need to go back to using. The inequality. X. Minus y is less than or equal to 5. I need a test point. So notice that 0, 0 does not, or the line, the red line, does not go through 0, 0. I can use 0, 0 for this line also. So let me circle the blue, so I'll know I used 0, 0 for both. My test point will be zero, zero. I love zero, zero. X is zero and Y is zero. So zero minus zero is less than or equal to five. Zero is less than or equal to five. Yes, of course it is. That's true. Yeah, it is. Okay. So now this is the true direction. 
that gave me a true. So from the red line, which is really a violet line, I'm going to draw in the direction of true because this side will give me all trues. And you can see where the lines are going to be overlapping. In here. This area here, and we can do this. This area is the true area. That's where I'll drag my little paint bucket and go click with the mouse. Now I have to solve this system of equations, which means I will find the vertex. Yeah, all right making sure that's really black. So here's line one. X plus Y equals one. And line two is X minus Y equals five. Well, you could use substitution this system is perfect for the elimination method, which I hope you recall, means that you add your X's, you add your Y's, and you add your constants, and either the X's or the Y's will zero out, which is precisely what happens here. Y minus Y is zero. So let's add x plus x is 2x plus 0 equals 1 plus 5 is 6. So 2x equals 6. Divide by 2, divide by 2. x equals 3. Now when I'm using elimination, which is what I used here, once I get an answer for one of the variables, I can go back to either equation and solve for the other variable. So let's use line one. X plus Y equals one. If X is three, then I'll have three plus Y equals one. So I will subtract I'll subtract three from both sides. Three minus three is zero, leaving me with a Y. Negative three plus Y is negative two. Let's see if it looks correct. Yes, it does. Positive three, negative two. So this is our vertex, three, negative two. So that's the vertex, three, negative two. If you're traveling, if you're an ant, for instance, traveling along this slice of the pie, the outside of it, you would be merrily going in this way, this direction. And then you would have to change direction 
at the vertex. The vertex denotes denotes there a direction change. That is an ugly A. Let me change that for people who might be coming after us, behind us. And they'll say, oh, that word is change. Okay. Vert. Is a Latin prefix or suffix. Remember what those are? You will by the time you get through with our communications classes. Prefix or suffix. That means direction change. Okay, we have solved another linear inequality in, well, system of linear inequalities in two variables. And we found the vertex. So we're done with linear functions. Now we're going to march on to quadratics. You'll love every minute of it. Talk to you later. Bye bye. The link to this video will be in module one in Canvas. You can't miss it.